Well, welcome back to Luke Rod Motor Services. I uh, am doing an alignment on a 79 Monte Carlo today. This is a mostly track car, a little bit of a street car. Uh, it's got a few things I'm going to go over. A lot of the reasons I do videos like this are to help the customers understand all of the things that they're paying me for when they bring me their vehicles. And most of my customers are extremely happy with the results because I've had multiple vehicles leave here and run personal best times after I've uh, made my adjustments. So I'm very honored that you guys bring your vehicles to me. Uh, I appreciate you guys for uh, supporting my small business and uh, helping me support my guys that work with me. So uh, thank you very much for bringing your vehicles here. This one's a pretty nice little... Uh, 79 Monte Carlo G body as I said before it's got quite a few modifications it's not very much G body anymore um, the front ride height's dead even I've dialed my Viking coilovers back down to zero just so that I get good cycling of the suspension that way it's not hanging up and doing weird things to me and giving me uh, strange readings my initial readings on this are pretty out there they're I got a ton of crossed camber and I haven't quite figured out why I've got such a large amount of crossed camber but we will figure that out our caster is pretty close it's within two tenths and our toe is a, a degree 1.2 degrees towed in and on lift it, it toes even it toes in even more to almost six degrees towed in um, and the customer was complaining about the vehicle pushing and it does it different ways depending on where he's at and you know the car just kind of has a mind of its own and with the toe being that far positive on lift that's probably uh, once we resolve that with the bump steer kit that problem will probably go away um, initially I've also measured my tie rod ends and this tie rod end is well over an inch longer than the other tie rod end so I'm going to start by squaring up my upper control arms because I've noticed that somebody's made some adjustments to those so they're not equal length and my tie rod ends are different lengths so we're going to just start by squaring some stuff up and then uh, we'll do a baseline alignment and then we'll realign it to verify uh, repeatable results. So it's a process of time. There's no way for me to give a set amount because I never know what I'm gonna be adjusting on these vehicles. Um, but most of the guys understand that, you know, it's, it's exactly what it is. It's, it's wrench time and they see the results when I'm done with it. So thanks again for everybody bringing me your vehicles to work on. Helps me pay my bills. So, I think I'm going to start with squaring up the upper control arms because I can visibly see that there's different lengths on those. So, we'll start with that. Well, our initial baseline, we need to do a lot of work on our caster, on our camber. We're pretty towed in. He's complaining about this thing wandering, which excessive front tow could certainly cause that. It's definitely pushing. It's going to be pushing the car around. Back end's nice and square. Uh, thrust angle's not too bad. About three tenths of a degree. Well, we might be able to square that up and set the anti-roll bar in the back, make things uh, work a little better. Tie rod ends 18 and a quarter. That tie rod ends 17 and a quarter. So when they when they drop, the, because they're different lengths, they're going to drop at different rates, and the toe is going to change at different rates. So the longer one's going to change at a different ratio than the shorter one. So that creates instability and speed. Um, we want everything to cycle evenly and uh, in parallel. So that's a big part of what I do here today.
I turn my turnbuckles on all four positions, both well, both, both positions, both sides, to one turn out, and then I can make adjustments from there. But I want to keep them even. And I measured the tie rod ends were an inch off, and if you look at the center line of the car and where the rod end is, you can see it's about a half inch off. So we're going to square that up. We're going to set the front end up, and we're not going to care where the steering wheel's at. We'll adjust that last. set my toe and then we'll see where we're at and then we can start removing shims so you can see that this rod end is substantially longer than that rod end this one needs to be longer and this one needs to be shorter but I'm pretty much at the end so I'll have to take it off at the end and turn it in on the inner rod end to even that one up well, now my upper control arms are square. I'm gonna remove some shims from my front position there. I'm gonna add some shims to my caster there. And my toe's a little more square. I still need to play with the bump steer a little bit, but we'll get to that later. closer so I'm probably gonna leave this side alone and bring my caster and camber to match that side and then we'll play with our uh, bump steer sling a couple more shims over here and I should be good Ooh, well that's pretty good I think that's our baseline I added a single eighth inch shim to the front position which brought my camber right where I want it balanced them out without a, within a tenth caster's dead even happy with my toe let's play with some bump steer see what that's going to do to us so when I lift this guy So six and a half degrees toe in, that's excessive. It's peeling tires and it's causing drag. Almost six inches of lift, that's pretty good. Um, so with the weight off the tires, I'm gonna move my shims. The question is, do I need to go up or down? Let's go longer and see if it gets worse because that's pretty quick and easy. Well, that looks familiar. What's happening? It's not old man's, but it's much like it. <laughs> or much like wishes. it, or much like it will be. Good um, Jesus! Yeah, over six degrees toe in. Six, six degrees toe in is a bit excessive. I was, I was seeing a. Oh. Holy I was, shit! I was, I was seeing tire peel over here, and I was wondering if it was the tire wearing off, but I think it's just transfer from the street. I was like, wow, that tire's getting hot like a... But, yeah. It'll, it's already far improved from when I started, so... Wow! He's going he's gonna to notice a substantial difference when, yeah. Wow! Six degrees on lift, yeah. Okay. See, well, six... It's exactly what I told him. Six, six four on lift. On total lift, it's 6.4. What does it do when you're fully extended running on your tippy toes? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's probably... Well, he said it, was, he said it has a, a weird wander to it, and it, it, it's never consistent. And I'm like, oh, that much toe in, it's yeah, probably, probably it. So, 
I haven't even looked at the back yet. I'm just the get the front somewhat close. Uh, yeah, I'm just squaring everything up right now. I've got my rod in square. They were an inch difference. The, yeah. the the center link was off a half inch, which means the steering gear may or may not be have an internal bend to it because the steering wheel is 90 degrees off, mm -hmm. and it's master spline. spline. So it's probably going to need a gear. Although it's not on a mat, it's on a Borgeson down here, so we can reclock it down here because it's just on a Borgeson, which shouldn't be master spline to the uh, to the shaft. A lot of work, lots of little bits, lots of little things. <laughs> my casters, little my caster is amazing. Now I got my caster dialed in at five three, five three on each side, sitting down. That'll do. That'll do. It's actually. Pretty damn clean. It's a super solid car. It's it's pretty nice. Uh, what was I doing? Bump steer. Let's go. Vikings all the way around? Uh, no, no, I think so. I, I know it's got them up front. Yeah, Vikings in the bear. Viking for the wind. Viking Crusaders on all four corners. TRZ. It actually in. looks like there's tire, uh, like sh tire shavings all over here. Which would mean he was probably steering with that tire, and this one was fully six degrees in, which would make sense because the car is going to be pushed to, the, and it's going to twist the driver's side up, right? Yeah. So he even that, that makes sense. You can see the the black dust. Yeah. So that tire has been the one steering, and this one's just been been floating as a kind of an air rudder. <laughs> as you have. <laughs> Have fun with your geometry project. Yes, lots and lots of geometry today. Square and parallel, that's the goal. Oh, it's going to be hard to steer. Two. 
two and a half degrees toe in. That's better. Tedious. Oh, I went too far. Cool. It's really close though. Just a hair towed out on lift from a hair towed in. So we'll go back the other way just a smidge. TMZ. Have them send me a bucket of shims again. Static. And we went just a little bit to the right, but my total toe in is negligible. You would have had to steer to the left just a hair. Or that might be these tight, super tight ball joints on this thing. So that's on lift. I'll take it. That's about as good as I can make a uh, bump steer kit right there. So I'm going to lock the bump steer kit down. I'm going to say he's going to have a noticeable difference in how this car handles down the track. <laughs> the tire ends are much, much closer. They're within an eighth, and I'm good with that. Uh, let's lock those into nylocks. And we'll start over. Start on back. Call up TMZ and get some more uh, shims. They're nice enough to sell us to sell us those shims without buying full kits because we do a lot of these alignments. <clears throat> now we start this process all over. Rear axle is kicked a little bit. Let's straighten it up in the chassis. And let's figure out what our pinion angle needs to be. He's not complaining about any vibrations, but we'll see if we can make it better. I have to do a little bit of a tweak to my, well, I can't trust these readings because I need to recomp it. So let's recomp it and start from the get-go. I'm wrapping this project up, but my steering wheel is a little bit off center. So luckily this is a race column. So I can loosen up that collet there and loosen up this splined uh, Boris and Universal and I should be able to just reclock it on the steering gear. It shouldn't be too big of a hassle. He's way down in here. One more tooth. Oh, that'll do. I'll take it. Oh, 
I am zoomed in. Oopsies. How long have I been zoomed in? Sorry about that. <laughs> oh. I want to touch it and spin it, but I won't because that's disrespectful to touch somebody else's turbo. I love it. Well, that's a wrap on this 79 Monte Carlo. Uh, strip setup more than street, but it should handle pretty well. We've got a couple things to mention to him for uh, extra clearance on down travel. But altogether, pretty nice looking ride. A lot of new parts in it. Um, now we've got all those front suspension components working together. I did square up the rear axle and I adjusted the anti-roll bar with uh, driver's weight in the car as well as the finish alignment with driver's weight in the car. Um, it doesn't change it much but it does you know every little bit is just that little touch more that makes the difference at the end of the track. Um, pretty happy with how this alignment turned out. My toe in on lift is negligible um, and still positive so it's everything we want it to be. You know uh, six tenths of a degree additional toe in on lift is way better than six and a half degrees like that was a ton so it should uh he should have noticeable results with this one at any rate i'm going to strip this thing down get it off the rack move on to the next one thanks for coming along for the ride you guys have a safe day we'll see you on the next one